right, guys, I laid some EDC items out on the table for you to look at while I make the video. If you want to know what these items are, I'll go over it at the end of this video. So I want to talk about a question that I got from a viewer. And I kind of liked the question, and I figured it was good enough to make a video about. I can't remember his channel name, but I'll give you a shout out in the comments if you let me know who you were. But after I had posted a couple of videos from the old Mansfield Reformatory prison that I had toured and talked about it being haunted, he asked me, do I actually believe in ghosts? And I'm going to explain to you right now what exactly that I do believe. Here is what I believe, guys. What we refer to as a ghost is a spirit or a demonic spirit. So for the reference in this video, when I speak of the term ghost, I am speaking of two things, a spirit or a demonic spirit, however you want to label it. And I believe just because a person dies does not create a ghost or a spirit. If that were the case, every place that you step would be haunted. There would literally be ghosts everywhere around you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, but that's not the way it works. And it is not the person themselves, but the spirit they carried that is the quote ghost. I believe it is these spirits or demonic spirits that can continue to inhabit places where they once had a stronghold of a person or a strong presence inside of a person. Let me give you an example. Someone that has died in a home does not mean that that home would have any kind of spirits or ghosts in that house. In fact, it most likely would not have anything out of the ordinary or any spirits whatsoever. But a home where someone has committed suicide or has been murdered could have a strong chance of being haunted. Because I believe 100% that suicide has a spirit that goes along with it. The same thing with murder. That would also have a spirit behind it that went with it, with the murder. Dying naturally or by accident does not carry that kind of spirit with it. I do not believe that a person can die and become invisible and still have a working mind and roam and haunt a place. But a spirit can make noises, sounds, and voices and move around and cause very weird things to happen. I don't believe that any haunting spirit in that prison I was in has the power to kill me or throw me off a cell block or burn me or hurt me in any way, but I do think that they can show signs of a presence of them being there. It is not 100% that a home or a building that had a suicide will carry a spirit, but it is 100% that the suicide carried a spirit with it. The reason why some have spirits left behind that linger and some don't, we may never know the answer to that question. So in a nutshell, I believe that there are spirits both for the good and spirits for the evil. And I do believe that places where there was uh, people were tortured, people were killed, people were executed, uh, people were in prison that had demonic spirits all over them, that done crimes that were unthinkable, not like blue collar crimes or crimes of theft or embezzlement, but I'm talking about things where you know this person was full of the devil or full of several demonic spirits. And I believe that a person can be full of several different spirits at the same time. And I do believe that a lot of these spirits have a trace or a, a, it can still have a stronghold on places where these people inhabited things. That's why there is so much activity and paranormal activity at old psychiatric hospitals, because a lot of what doctors determine as mental illness is actually demon possession. Not 100% of the time, there is legitimate mental illness, but a lot of the people that have things that are going wrong, they're hearing voices, the doctor will throw drugs at that. Hearing voices, the doctor will throw a name at that and call it some kind of a clinical term. But a lot of times things like hearing voices in your mind and things telling you to do things, that is 100% some kind of a demonic influence and spirit that is on that person's life. That's why that in these old abandoned hospitals that there was so much paranormal activity because there were such strongholds on people and there was such there was such a 
there was such an impact of demonic influences in there that it still lingers. It, it, it's still in the hallways and in the rooms. It doesn't actually totally ever filter out, I believe. These things can linger around almost as if they're trapped inside of that building where they once inhabited the person, whether it be that the person died or whatever happened, but that spirit came out and, it, and it's still, there's a lingering effect of what was in there at one time. So guys, that's what I believe when we talk about the term ghosts. I don't believe that anything that they call a ghost is an actual human being that is still there but invisible. There is a lot of things in the spirit world and a lot of things that the natural eye can't see. Like I talked about in the video before, did you ever meet somebody and you said, wow, I really feel weird when I'm around this guy. Something just rubs me the wrong way. I don't know what it is. I can't put my finger on it. But there's just something there with that guy that I, I it looks like he's looking right through me. And, and I really don't like to be too close to him. It feels like I'm being repelled away, like two magnets being turned against each other that are pushing away in the opposite direction. And then to go out and find coworkers or other people that when you go to tell them this, they already know it and they tell you the same thing. Yeah, we all feel that way. Nobody likes to be around that guy. We get a weird feeling. We can't, we can't even stand close to him. I'm going to tell you right now what that is, is that guy has a strong demonic presence or spirit in his life that other people are sensing whenever they're nearby and they're close and it, it is creeping them out. They don't, they can't tell it. They can't see it with their with the naked eye, but if they could see what's on this guy with their spiritual eye, they would probably run and never go back into that building. But it's so strong that they can feel it and it's repelling them away from this person. I've heard countless stories about this. Uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, who had originally lived in the same state I'm in, Ohio, in Bath Township, it's where he had his first kill, then he moved to Milwaukee. He actually worked at the Harry London's Chocolate Factory. And in interviewing and different people that had worked with him, they had stated that he was a nice guy, but they said there was always something odd there. They said there was always, people felt creeped out. They didn't really want to be next to him. Nobody was buddy-buddy. Nobody sat with him in the lunchroom. They said he was a loner. Well, there was a reason he was a loner. The spirits that he had on him, and I believe it was several, it was repelling people away. It was such a strong force that everybody around him could feel it. They just couldn't see it with their natural eye. Uh, but people will write this off now and they'll say, oh, they're only saying that because they know what Jeffrey Dahmer did and they're going back and thinking about it and they're now changing and they're thinking that way. I don't believe that. Uh, they said that this guy was like, you know, never talked to anyone. And it was easy for somebody like that to do because people didn't really want to be around him. So that's my take, guys. Now, and also let me add in there, Somebody like Jeffrey Dahmer getting killed like he did in prison with a guy beating him with a, with a broom handle or whatever it was, uh, him getting killed in prison, that right there could be the typical scenario of where people could go into that prison in that area where Jeffrey Dahmer was killed in that shower area and they could say there's paranormal activity because there could be remnants that are still left behind that was inhabiting him while he was on this earth. And then they had nowhere to go once once he was gone and his soul escaped the body. All right, guys, that's my take. I hope you found it informative. Any questions, concerns, or comments, leave it down below. And like I said, I'd tell you what this stuff is if you wanted to know. Glock 43, Brooks Tactical A-Grip, Excess Big Dot Night Sights. Thank you, Crazy 45 Cat. Uh, this is an extra magazine with a Terran Tactical Plus 3 base plate. This has the Terran Tactical Plus 1 base plate on there. This is the Uzi Tactical Pen. Love this. It's an everyday carry. Wouldn't be without it. This is the SMAEL Smell Watch. Just a cheapie, like 17 bucks. This is the Field Notes Notebook. You can write down notes and whatnot and put your name in there for people to return. You can even put if you leave a reward if people return this. Um, so you can get that back. This is the Pop-Off Leather uh, Wallet. Really like this. I'm still using it. And this is the Olight S2R Baton 2. I love this light. It's dependable. It lasts a long time. It has a lot of different modes, and uh, that's what I rock every day. All right, guys, until next time, this is DOF, and I am...